What's up everybody, Jesse here, and for my Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild tips and tricks series, I'm going to be showing you possibly the easiest and fastest way to get the Shard of Nadra's Horn. The Hyrule Compendium gives us a little bit of information about Nadra. It describes it as a spirit of ice has taken the form of this giant dragon. Making its home in the Lineru region, it's said to have served the Spring of Wisdom since ancient times. An old saying goes, the dragon ascends to the heavens as the sun begins to set, but nobody has seen seen this in the current age. The ice that coats its body makes it dangerous to get near, but Nadra bears no ill will toward people. Common locations include Mount Laneru, and the recoverable materials are unknown. It basically gives the same generic description to all three of the dragons and says the same thing about them. Now we see here that I am at the fairy fountain. You're wanting to upgrade your champion's tunic, but you don't know where to find the dragon. All you have to do is find Mount Laneru, you can see here glowing, and you see this red marker, which is where you need to go. So we're going to warp over to Mount Laneru. If you don't have this unlocked just yet, I'm sure there's another point you can warp toward and you'll be able to find this location pretty easily. You don't specifically need to be on top of Mount Laneru, but you need to get pretty close to it. You also may want to equip some warm clothes so you don't freeze like I am here. We're going to put on snow boots, the snow quill tunic, and the snow quill headdress. Make sure you have plenty of wood and arrows so you don't have to leave the spot in case you mess up. So the most time consuming part of this will actually be climbing to the top of the mountain. If you can find another way to get around it from this spot, or if you can just make your way to the location that I am, then you won't even need to do anything with Mount Laneru. I cannot see a thing. So you want to make your way to this point here, Laneru Road East Gate. Right in front of where I'm at right now, you'll actually come across a memory, and there's a shrine further down this path. The dragon will come and fly straight through this canyon, so I find it easiest to find a good spot that you're comfortable with. I think this is where I was able to find him last time, so we're going to go ahead and place our wood on the ground with a piece of flint. This will work better if you have fire arrows, but I'm all out. After you set up camp, wait till the morning, just like when you're hunting for Osh's horn. Look toward the top of Mount Laneru and you'll see the dragon become visible. It'll circle around a bit before making its way down to you. Just as with the other dragons, you want to make sure that you have a normal arrow. That way your aiming can be more accurate as bomb arrows and other types of arrows kind of weigh down. So you have to aim a bit higher than you would typically need to do. This one's fairly easier to hit because its horn spreads out a lot wider than the other two dragons. So we can see it getting close. If you have the ability unlocked that you get from defeating the Rito Guardian, it will help you out. You want to make sure it's close enough for you to be confident in hitting it before you jump in the air. So I hit at the very tip of its head connecting to its horn. Watch where it shoots out to so you don't lose it. It looks like ours is landing in the water. If you run out of stamina, don't worry. The wind of the dragon will give you basically unlimited stamina, as you can see here. Ours actually landed right near a chest. So we see here we got Shard of Nadra's Horn. And a chest, but uh, we're not actually worried about the chest. So you require two pieces of Nadra's Horn, so we're just going to swim back over to where we set up camp. If you don't get this on your first try, don't worry. It took me a couple of tries before I was able to get it perfect. The trick is to aim when it's the closest to you. You don't want to let it get too close. That way if you miss, you'll still have a chance to hit it because it flies a lot faster than you do. So you won't be able to run and catch up to it or glide and catch up to it. The most time consuming part is probably going to be making it all the way back to your original camping area. Or if you find a better spot to camp, you can make a second camp like I'm going to do over here. We're going to get out our wood and flint once again. 
camp until morning like last time, look up in the sky towards Mount Laneru, and we'll see it start coming directly towards us once again. You want to do the same thing, maybe after you get the first piece of horn it'll be easier to get the second. Again you want to make sure you have enough arrows to do this, you're only going to be able to get one piece of its body at a time, so if you miss, if you hit its head and get a shard of its fang, if you hit its body and you get a piece of its scale, then you'll have to do the same thing over again, reset to the next morning, and try again. You can't get two pieces at once on its horn, so you just want to be careful. And that's why it's important to wait until it's close enough that you know for sure that you're going to be able to hit its horn. We see my ability from the Rito hasn't charged up just yet, so we're going to have to do this as a normal person would. So we jump out right in front of its head, shoot, hit it directly on its horn. We can see it flying off in the distance. You want to make sure to f not the dragon. It does shoot off a very far distance from where you hit the dragon. So depending on which direction it goes in, it could land in a very, very hard spot to find. Especially if it's blocked like it is right now to where you can't necessarily see it glowing. The dragon can hurt you with its energy balls that you see. Each dragon has its own kind. This one was ice. <laughs> so I actually got hit as soon as I picked it up, which is kind of funny. So now that we're finished collecting the two pieces of horns, we can warp to the great fairy of our choice. I always go to Kakariko Village, it was the first fairy that I found, and I find it's pretty easy to make it to it. The shrine spawns you really close to where you need to go, so it's a little bit more convenient for me. Now remember I do have guides on how to get shards of horns from the other two dragons, so be sure to check those out if you're trying to level the champion's tunic up as much as possible. We load up here at the shrine next to Kakariko Village. You want to run up here, as I said in one of my other videos. Another reason I like this spot is because it's easy to get the berries around the location and sometimes you'll come across the blue little shiny creature, I forgot what it's called. You can attack it with arrows, it'll drop rupees and if you take a picture of it you can use that picture during one of your quests. So you want to come here with your two horn shards and trade them to the great fairy in order to upgrade your clothing. But if you've watched all of these videos then you should be good to go and have everything that you need in order to upgrade your champion's tunic as far as it can be. If you need help getting the horn shards from the other two dragons I have videos on that as well. And I also have plenty other how to videos on many other quests in the games. How to get certain rare items, shields, tunics, big goron sword, the hylian shield, and several other things. How to defeat certain bosses easily, and let me know your thoughts on this video and the methods that I used in the comments below. Also, let me know what you would like to see from future videos. What kind of tips, tricks, walkthrough, guides, how to's, or strategy videos would you like to see? And if I can, I'll try my best to have it recorded and uploaded in just a few days. So be sure to let me know what you want to see from future videos in the comments below. And obviously, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on it when the video does upload. And with all of that out of the way, thank you for watching. What's up everybody, really quick before we get to the usual in slate, I wanted to mention a quick update for this channel. I'm trying to bring together a few new series other than the usual discussions and news videos that we do. I would like to bring quality reviews, let's plays, do more live streams, a top 10 series, and more analysis videos. However, to do this, I need your help. Between being a new father, YouTube, and my real job, I don't have the time to work on all of these videos. So I'd like to bring on other people who can help out from time to time, like Sissizi and others who have helped host and edit videos before. To make this all happen, and to get awesome rewards for yourself, head over to patreon.com slash gameoverjesse where you can get shoutouts and videos, join our group discord and chat with us whenever you want, be a guest on some of our videos, and much more. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and leave your thoughts in the comments below. I would like to give a huge thank you to this month's Patreons for their support. George Martinez, Glenn Cassio, Hen Hu Tienen, Lunarium, Magic Tech Review, The Itch Network, and Harris Priest. Thank you all for everything and it's because of your support that I'm able to find the time to do these videos. If you would also like to support this channel, head over to patreon.com slash gameoverjesse where you can find all kinds of great rewards like joining on a video, being added onto our discord chat, having your discussion or topic featured on one of our videos, and much more, including having your own custom artwork similar to my own, drawn of you in any anime or video game style you would like. Finally, I would like to give a huge thank you to Nomo Designs and CSGuitar89 for providing the music and artwork for this channel. <laughs>